you took over uh, Watson in January. What has most delighted and surprised you about the work that you've seen and participated in this year? Yeah, um, I would say when people are trying to use Watson in the real world, they're solving problems. So um, in August, the University of Tokyo had an instance of Watson for Oncology. They used that to read a six-year-old woman's medical records. Um, she had a very rare form of leukemia, but because the system was built on a lot of prior data, including every patient ever at Memorial Sloan Kettering, they found in 10 minutes what they had not solved in six years, and she's better. And I just think the, the chance to actually extend life to bring computing power to these real everyday decisions matters. And, and when you broaden out the medical, because like you've done some great thing in radiology and everything else, yeah. what do you see as the trends for how, you know, improvement in medicine's happening? You know, what does that also mean? Because we're thinking about what the future of work is. How does, that, how does that arc in medical and improvement of work, what do you see as the future of that? Yes, yeah, so um, whether medical or law, which we just saw, we're doing a lot, a lot of that, accounting, Watson's great at rules. Um, basically, what we're automating is sort of the base level rote work, and that frees up time and capacity to solve bigger problems, um, and to actually be more clear what's unsolved. So you can find in the patterns of leukemia what we don't know, and that'll help researchers find solutions. Uh, in my prior work in weather, which got me here, um, in climate models, you see that what we don't understand, we understand the atmosphere very well, we don't understand what's happened to the oceans. So you can be more precise what we need to know, you can put an economic value on it, and you can create jobs to get the information we need yeah. to better understand the oceans, which will help us solve climate change. Yeah. Basically, it shifts the work for symbiosis, because you say, well, once we have this covered, we can actually generate all this work, which actually make the whole system better. Right. And, the, and the world still has a lot of unsolved problems. So for me, I think freeing human capacity to solve hard problems is what all this is gonna do. One of the things I was trying to prompt you with on the medical side is a conversation you know I've had is, um, is the times when the doctors overrule the radiology yeah. and kind of what you've learned from that. And I think that's worth, you know, kind of when people understand the current progress of AI. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, we, uh, there was a, uh, the head of the oncology department at uh, UNC was on 60 Minutes Sunday talking about Watson, and he gave his statistic, which is uh, they tested diagnosis, 30% of the Watson diagnoses had not been found by humans. Um, so it opened new doors and new answers for one thing. I would say secondly, we do find that the machines do over time uh, come to better predictions. So I, I know in weather, for example, that 70% of the time that the meteorologist overrides the system, they make the forecast worse. And we see similar statistics, whether it be, you know, r radiology or law or um, accounting. It's just that a system can be unbiased and it has more knowledge, so it can, it can help come to answers better.